Hey guys, this video is going to discuss the Oryx boss fight on hard mode and the strategies we use to defeat him. The video will assume that you understand normal mode. All mechanics are the same unless mentioned in this video. So first of all, this is probably the hardest boss fight in the game because revives are disabled and an average fire team needs all six members to win, especially at a low light level compared to the recommended level. Our light levels for this fight were 1 level 313, 1 level 312, 2 level 311s, 1 level 309, and 1 level 305. Knowing what our light levels were, our strategy was to let the player with the lowest light level run the platforms above because they do the least amount of fighting in this fight. So we had our 305 light level run platforms get the invisibility and run all the platforms and grab the relic. The one really big difference in this encounter versus normal mode is the new enemy called the Light Eater Knights. We'll get to those in a bit. At first the fight goes pretty much the same as normal mode until the ogre killing portion. A good strategy we used was to have a defender titan sit in the middle of the map with a blessing of light, bubble, and the touch of malice. That player, along with the available player from the platforms, will duck in and out of the bubble with Touch of Malice using an overshield to control the Touch of Malice damage. This helps tremendously killing the ogres. If you were not already aware, all four platformers are not needed to be stood on. The platform that has the relic above it does not have to be activated, so that person can jump to the middle and help with the ogres and add clearing. Once an ogre goes down, the new enemy, the Light Eater Knight, will appear behind the opposite platform. You need to kill these knights as quickly as possible in order to keep the bombs available from damaging Oryx. These knights will run over to the bomb and basically eat the bomb so that you cannot activate it later on. If you miss a Light Eater Knight, it's not the end of the world. Make sure you pay attention to Oryx and stagger him or else he will wipe your whole team. The Oryx stagger is priority over killing the Light Eater Knight. We lost a total of 4 bombs to Light Eater Knights in our successful run, so make sure to kill them if you can, but do not prioritize them over the Oryx Stagger. Sniper Rifle with good impact is great, like the Thousand Yard Stare, because it kills these knights in 2 shots, 2 headshots. A high level Sleeper Simulant is also good because it one shots them to the head. After the first phase comes the usual Aerial Assault. This for my team was the most dangerous and aggravating portion of the fight. Avoid the airstrikes and make it to the next damaging phase if you can. Do not die. If you die in this phase, it's going to be nearly impossible to win this fight, especially at a lower light level. After you get past the aerial assault phase, it's the same usual damage phase. Kill the ogres, kill the light eater knights, kill the vessel, stagger oryx, and grab your bombs. Teleportation works the same as normal mode. When Oryx is about half health, he will begin to teleport your fire team members into the chamber he has. You need to kill the Shade of Oryx as quickly as possible in order to escape or you will wipe. If you're using Touch of Malice here, I suggest switching to something else that will not hurt you. But do not switch at the cost of significant cost to your light level. If you're switching weapons and your light level goes down 2 or 3 points, it's extremely dangerous and you will probably die inside of that bubble because you're going to take much more damage. Do not switch off weapons at the cost of your light level. Just use your special weapon, use your heavy weapon. Try to avoid using the Touch of Malice. Once the Shade is defeated, you'll escape and move on to another damage phase. Do everything you did before and stay alive. Kill the Ogres, kill the Light Eater Knights, stagger Oryx, and get your bombs. Make sure somebody keeps shooting orcs. This is a problem that we had where we used our platform runner to continue to damage orcs as much as possible. We used the other mid member to clear adds as much as possible. If you don't continue to shoot orcs, he won't take damage, even if you activate bombs. So make sure you continue to shoot orcs as much as possible. In my opinion, once you get to the shade teleport phase, the fight gets much easier. Just remember to kill ogres quickly, kill your Lady Eater Knights, and stay alive. Recommended supers for this fight 
in my opinion, are Defenders with Blessing for Titans, Sunsingers with Fireborn for Warlocks, and Hunters can run Shadow Shot so they can cloak, be safe, and then they can tether the shade to add more damage to them as quickly as possible. Ad clearing is extremely important in this fight as ads will do massive damage to you if you don't pay attention to them. I suggest one of the middle teammates try to clear ads as much as possible while also helping with the ogres. Ads are much more dangerous than they are in normal. They do massive damage. The acolyte eyes are just a pain to deal with. So make sure you take those out. Make sure you watch out for centurion axion darts. Those hurt. And make sure you're just controlling the ads as much as possible. This fight is all about repetition and practice. You're likely going to wipe many times, my team did. Just practice and find a rhythm that your team understands and the fight will go well. The fight's not impossible, anyone can clear it. If you're having trouble because of light level, I suggest going back through the whole raid again with other characters. Hopefully you can get drops that will help either that character or your current character level up. My team and I went through the full hard mode raid three times before we finally beat Oryx for the first time. Light level and survival are the only requirements to beat this fight. Touch of Malice is not even necessary if, you have, if you've got a good team and good light levels. I'm sure I've left some information out of the video because there's just so much going on in this fight and everybody has a job to do. It might be a bit different than the other person, so I might have not experienced something new that I wasn't told about. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond to as many people as I possibly can. If you're having trouble finding a team for this raid, try LFG sites. They're great for finding teams. Some sites automatically match you to people based on requirements. If you have a problem with LFG sites, you still can't find people, feel free to message me and add me on Xbox One. Just send me a message telling me you came from the video and I'll add you back. I'm not doing carries, so don't expect me to carry you through the raid, but if there's ever an open slot on the raid team, which there usually is, I'll grab someone from the friends list and you can be that person. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll leave the video playing so you can see the full fight. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll respond if I can. If the video helped, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.